right, clubwwi.com members. You know, long before anybody was on Team Edward, Team Jacob, well, we've always been on well, Team Kevin, because today we are joined uh, by one of the most memorable characters in WWE twice. Uh, he is the truest blood, and if you need one good reason to join clubwwi.com, we'll give you seven. Kevin Thorne. Kevin, how are you? Man, I'm doing well. How about yourself, James? Doing all right? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. And before we even get into your career, what's going on by you? How are things in the world of uh, of Seven Thorn? Oh, man, uh, things are going great, man. You know, I, I definitely definitely can't complain uh, getting out there and, uh, you know, being a part of some good federations uh, out there on the indie scene. And, you know, uh, more to that is, I, you know, I'm, I'm loving life getting a Sit at home, pretty much uh, a nine to five job, hanging out with my son all day. So I mean, nice. things things can be better for me right now. That's pretty awesome. Man. One of the things I noticed that you were doing too is uh, you've been working with the WFX a little bit too. They're doing a lot of the uh, the Johnny Fairplay stuff and things like that. Yeah, man. W, uh, WFX has been has been uh, great. You know, I've, I've been on uh, almost every show that they've had, uh, kind of since they've uh, relaunched this thing, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, uh, a work in progress for sure, but uh, as far as it goes, uh, I mean, it's got uh, some great talent that they're bringing in up up to Win- Winnipeg, and uh, you know, it's uh, it definitely seems like it's got some strong backing. Uh, they just landed a deal uh, with American One, uh, yeah. where they're gonna they're gonna be on uh, um, TVs. I want to say there's like 30 million TVs or something like that across the United States that they're gonna be on. Um, and then they've, you know, they landed some some local stuff up in Winnipeg. They're working on tough, and they're also working on trying to get on versus. So, I mean, uh, as an upstart program and, and getting involved in it, it's uh, sky's the limit, man. You know, and uh, they've really uh, allowed me to have some control too of you know my character and and uh, and what we're doing. Uh, you know, uh, Gangrel and I are, are, are formed a group called the Brotherhood and. You know, we've been kind of running rough shot over over a lot of people there, and you know, we just we've been having the time of our lives. You know, just getting to do what we want to do. See, that is awesome. One of the things I've noticed about you, in particular, is that I mean, you always have work, and you hear so many people who will go out there and say, "Well, it's so hard to find work in wrestling." But one of the things I've noticed about you is not only are you always working, but I mean, talk about promoting. I go to your website; it's one of the most professional websites out there. It's really important to kind of know who you are as a, as a character and as a performer uh, to find work in the business today. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think the, the the key with stuff like that is, is and, and this is, you know, maybe advice to younger guys or, you know, the guys that are trying to break into business and stuff. And, you know, by no means am I a grizzled vet that's been out there a long time. But the one thing I, I, I think I try to do more so than than a lot of guys is, is I try to market myself, you know. I, I think the biggest problem with the, the business today is guys are just doing it to do it. Um, you know, this isn't a do-it-to-do-it do kind of thing. This is a business. I mean, you, you know, um, when you get up to a level of, you know, a WWE guy or an ex-WWE guy on the independent level, I mean, this is this is what pays my mortgage. It pays my car notes. You know, it pays, it pays things, uh, you know. So to not... You know, go after it, you know, wholeheartedly, and and, and try to market myself and, and and be marketable, and you know, also be reputable for the companies that are that are booking me. You know, not only you know, you, you can bring Stone Cold to anywhere in this country if nobody knows he's there. Well, nobody's going to show up. So uh, I mean, you know, it's it, you know, not only up to me, but it's up to these promoters too. I, you know to get your name out there, you know, to get it out there and let everybody possibly know that could be in, in any kind of driving distance or hell, even flying distance if they wanted to fly, know about that show. So, I mean, it's it's a, it's a big plus to, you know, to, to work hard on, you know, getting out there. It used to be, I mean, especially, I know you broke in around uh, probably about a decade ago, right? So it was, it was kind of different back then, back, you know, kind of before the Internet. People dreamed about becoming wrestlers, but... At the end of the day, you know, if you either really pursued it or you didn't. But nowadays, it's kind of easy to almost pursue anything. That you have a lot of kind of you know, weekend warriors that decide, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a, a pro wrestler for the weekend. It's very different than making it a career. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And I mean, you know, and, and that's the thing is, if you want to do this as a career, then then you have to go at it as a as a it's your, it's your business. I mean, if you own a 
a lawn mowing company, a personal training company, you know, any kind of company, you know, you you have to present your services out there and 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 you know and and, and network and commercial. I mean, you you can't just you know hope that someone's going to miraculously know about you because they don't. I mean, you know, you know, prime examples I think of guys that used the internet to their their best advantage was you know CM Punk. I mean, he was all over it you know, on the internet before beforehand and got noticed and, you know, used that, that star power that he, he already made to elevate himself even higher. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, and uh, Brian Danielson, some of those guys, I mean, they've, they've worked hard, you know, you know, going around the country, but also worked hard on, you know, making sure people knew who they were, you know. Yeah, it's important. That's what, I mean, one, and one of the things, too, I think people talk about breaking into the business and how it's changed. One of the things I read about you is that, uh, you actually broke in by working out with um, you know, another former guest here, uh, Sid Vicious, back in uh, in Memphis. Is that is that right? Yeah, yeah. What were those workouts like? <laughs> I can only imagine. Oh, Dude, uh, he's insane. <laughs> um, you know, he he's. Uh, I mean, he pretty much. I mean, he, he he still has it ingrained in my head. You know, I haven't talked to Sid in a while, but I mean, I still. You know, if I hadn't worked out in that day, I'm like. You know, chomping at the bit to work out at some point during the day. I mean, it's it's it, it, it really really helped me out. You know, becoming you know down the road too. As far as you know, I, I know a lot of guys. You know, they get on the road, they start sleeping in, they start you know whatever. You know, I mean, when I was on the road, it didn't matter. I'd still like somehow miraculously wake up at eight. You know, go to the gym. You know, find a gym in the phone book, go work out. You know, do everything. You know, eat. Uh, and be done by 11 and, you know, either be headed to the building or, you know, driving to the next town if it was a house show or whatever. But, you know, so those are some of the things that, you know, that I learned through him, you know, that, that I think, you know, really helped me today as far as, you know, my how my body feels and stuff like that is, you know, I, I, I got up and did it, you know, regardless, you know, I made myself, you know. So it's definitely, definitely insane, you know, uh, getting to say that, you know, he's, he's, He's the one that's got my head the way it is now as far as having to work out every day, I guess. Man, I mean, he's one of those characters, too. I think I even run into my friends who maybe don't watch wrestling as much as, you know, we used to, but they, they all remember Sid. You know, he was, he was that guy who just kind of you know, ingrained in your head if you ever saw him on TV once. Looking sa- I mean, always always kept in great shape, always, you know, looking, you know, insane. I mean, you know, the traps on that man were, I mean, just ridiculous. You know? <laughs> yep. And, uh, I mean, you know, I, I learned a lot, uh, with Sid, especially, you know, marketing and, and stuff like that. Um, uh, actually, but like, uh, back when we were, he was breaking me into business and stuff like that, um, uh, he decided to do this thing like Pride of the Brotherhood, and we were proud of the Brotherhood everywhere we were. You know, we wore these t-shirts, we did all this stuff, but, you know, uh, definitely believed in, you know, living the gimmick, you know, a little bit. You know, you, if you're gonna present yourself in a certain way, you know, I think, you know, sometimes you should you should come to your appearances or, or or come to your shows. You know, dressed in that way, so you don't lose the allure. I guess you'd say um, to the fans. I think the fans see you as something, and you, you you come looking like if you're a vampire and you come looking like an Amber Crombie and Finch model. I think the disconnects there sometimes. So I, you know, I always try to present myself. Um, you know, in the way I was when I was doing Mordecai, I constantly wore white to the point where I was getting heat with the boys because I was always in white. Yeah. But it was kind of that that betrayal of this this pure individual craziest uh, crap zealot, you know, out there. So I, I I thought, well, what would be more crazy than wearing white? I mean, white belt, white shoes, white. Like, oh, like this, like this, like this. In fact, I have a whole closet full of white stuff. If people want it, they can have it. God, they can get it out of my closet. Do the Joe Jarrell will take it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> From back in the day, no doubt, no doubt. So, yeah, man, you know, it's a, it's the it's the crazy things you you learn sometimes along the way. I think. Well, I mean, that brings me all the way back to, to one of the points that I was making when I was looking at your, your entire career is even from when you first began till today, you've kind of always been playing the same character. I think a lot of the things that, that kind of made you feel genuine was the fact that, I mean, you've always kind of been on that side in terms of what your, what your gimmick was. There was never a point where you were like a fireman or a, you know, so, I mean, it kind of feels a little more genuine in, in, when you actually are kind of the person that you're portraying. Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And I, I mean, you know, a, lo- a lot of my, a lot of my character stems from, um, uh, 
my father was a was a, a deacon slash kind of pastor in the Southern Baptist Church, you know, um, in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, it was always it was always a, a, a religion thing with me is how could I, you know, use the religion I know in a way of not not necessarily for bad, but more or less to make people think. I think if you know you're you're the Eat, eat your vitamins, you know, whatever way to use, you, you know, use God and religion to your advantage. People are kind of turned off about it because, you know, I, I think sometimes I think people, you know, oh, great, he's just another do-gooder. Where if you take it and you twist, you know, you twist it around and you use it like, you know, uh, in, in a way of, you know, kind of like seeing punks doing a little bit now with the, the you know, the straight-edge society kind of thing, and, you know, you make them hate it in a way that they're almost like, well, how dare you tell me I can't be good and I can't do this and I can't do that. So it's, it was kind of always, uh, I think, in that way in my in my head, used, used, used like that. And I was always a huge a huge mark for the movie Seven mm-hmm. and, and John Doe in it. And, uh, you know, and that's what kind of where I got the name Seven at was, um, you know, I, I wanted to do the Seven Deadly Sins. I wanted to always, you know, point towards the Seven Deadly Sins in the very beginning of my career. You know, and um, uh, when I first got on Power Pro Wrestling with it was because, uh, you know, I, I, I went to uh, Jim Cornette, who was writing Power Pro at the time, and I said, look, I said, yeah, you know, your girlfriend Stacy's name is Sin. Um, uh, she has a group. I would like to be called Seven. And he was like, well, wow, you know, what the fuck would you want to be that called? You know, whatever. And I said, well, well, Jimmy, I said, this is why, you know, Seven Deadly Sins, Purgatory, all this stuff. Oh, kid, you're 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 a genius, and you know next the next week, and we were we were you know hunting people down in the locker rooms, and they were found with their sin written across them, and you know and 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 different stuff. So I mean, you know it it worked out great, you know, and, and that's what got me noticed, you know, down in down in Memphis, and then that's what ended up getting me you know a developmental deal and sent sent up to Cornette in Louisville. So I mean, yeah, you know, it, it's uh been kind of a crazy train, you know, for yeah. sure. I think it's funny too because you're you're the guy that people think of when they think of seven. But I mean, for that brief period they had where uh, where Dustin Rose was actually going to play it in WCW and then walked out of it, uh, I guess, which is a totally different type of gimmick. I mean, were you already playing the gimmick at that time? Was it something that yeah, I was were, were you worried? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you... actually, I was. I mean, I was kind of like, oh shit, you know, oh, you know. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is money. That whole entrance, and then all of a sudden. You take it all off and mm-hmm. you, you say you don't want to do it. It's kind of like, okay, all right. Because uh, to me, I mean, Dustin, Dustin, and you know, Dusty to this day are you know two of my favorite promo guys. I mean, um, uh, for the couple times I went down and was um, you know helping out or being being held in the jail at, at Florida Championship Wrestling or whatever it was I was doing down there. Um, uh, I, Dusty was, I mean, uh, he would do promo classes, and I mean, it would be like a daily thing for me to go in there and and, and let's see if I can, you know, give give Dusty goosebumps today. And you know, Dusty is always so complimented of 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 my promos and stuff like that, and in, in the class, and you know, oh, kid, me and you could have made a lot of money together. Kid, me and you could have made a lot of money together. And I was like. Man, I only wish if I just would have been around twenty years earlier. Yeah, I would have loved to have made a lot of money with you, Dusty. Was, see, was that frustrating for you though? Because that's one of the, one of the things that we talked to a lot of guys who, who got into the business and have the ability to kind of cut their own promos and and kind of market themselves, like you're able to do. Is that you know, when you make it to the big leagues today? In, in some ways, a lot of the things that existed twenty years ago, the guys got themselves over, like the Pipers and the Moroccos. Uh, it's it's not as available because now I mean you can still get yourself over, but it's it's kind of someone else's words. It's not so much you know how you uh, how you can kind of wing it. Uh, was ever frustrating at a certain point where you say you know if I could just go out there and just do this on my own, I, I would get over more than, uh, than what I'm uh, having to do here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, I mean, a lot of times. I mean, you know that was the thing, um, especially with the Kevin Thorne stuff. Is I was telling them, you know, because I was, you know. Um, I learned through Paul Heyman a long time ago about, you know, trying to keep up with pop culture and trying to, you know, uh, you know, stay ahead of the game by reading what's going to be coming on in the future and stuff like that. And, I mean, I, you know, I knew that, you know, Twilight was coming. The, the books were starting to come be everywhere. And then, 
you know, slow, you know, slowly and surely, you couldn't even walk into an, L, you know, an airport bookstore, you know, a, a Barnes and Noble, a, you know, a, whatever bookstore you were, without there being this huge display of books, you know, and, and then of Twilight, and then knowing that the movie's coming, and then you know, also you know, researching, you know, knowing that True Blood was coming. I mean, you know, uh, I mean. That's another series that's going to be, you know, along the lines of the Sopranos. At least, you know, the start of this season has been already phenomenal. Yeah. And I mean, you know, and, and that kind of stuff. And you know, I'm trying to tell them, and you know, it needs to be a group. It needs to be this. I mean, you know, uh, me and Ariel are, are doing this. It could be so much better. And you know, you you get told, oh yeah, we're going to do something with it. And then all of a sudden, like they pump the brakes harder. I mean, just slam on the brakes with me. And it would be like, all right, and you just sit there and sit back and you try to bite your tongue and you try to bite your tongue, and then all of a sudden, you know, it start to move again. The train would start to move again, and you start to get ahead of steam, and you you, you felt like you're definitely going to get somewhere with it, and the brakes would slam again. So, I, yeah, I mean, it constantly, uh, um, I guess a a, 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 a mind craziness sometimes I, I think it was is, mm-hmm. you, you know and, but I mean that comes from the top I mean you know as, as, as genius as Vince McMahon is he's crazier than shit and, you know I mean he is I just but I mean but unfortunately the, the, the uh, not unfortunately but the greatest geniuses out there are most of the time the craziest because you know, it's their mind. I mean, they're just they're too smart for their own good that it plays tricks in their own heads. And I mean, I think that was, you know, that, that is the case with Vince McMahon. Is, I mean, you know, uh, somewhere in there he sold his soul to the devil, and and you know, and you know, to a number one never age because he doesn't look like he's aged a day in his life. You know, <laughs> from from some point on, I mean, the guy never sleeps. I mean, he, he's. You know he's in, in in physical in great physical shape. I've seen him work out before. Uh, one time doing some promos at the uh, uh, Titan Towers uh, and, and and watching that man work out. I mean, he's he is he's an animal. I mean, he really is. I mean, you, you can't say anything bad about him. You know, because if you were on that level and you had that much money on the line and 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 and, and, and that much craziness going on in your life twenty four seven and you had to micromanage everything, you're gonna be a little insane. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's nothing nothing you can do about it. So I mean I mean but it, it sometimes I think he forgets where he's going with it because he's got so much on his plate and then he pumps the brakes on something and then realizes, oh shit, I didn't want to do that this time. So <laughs> here we go again and then oh what you know, oh I didn't want to do it, you know. But then too I think other people get in his head sometimes, you know, uh, about things, you know, and and I think that's what um you know, caused issues, at least with me, was, you know, uh, there for a while, I mean, Vince was telling me, you know, because uh, I was, I was, I was so close to being like The Undertaker that it was like, I had, I was, I was trying to do fine line things to keep me from, you know, being too close. I mean, so I was putting red in my hair, I was wearing red ties, I was, you know, trying to, trying to go a little bit, you know, stronger with colors, you know, like reds and, you know, just, just something to kind of, you know, keep me from, from looking so much, so much like him. And, you know, I remember it well in Cincinnati, you know, Vince walks by me, he stops and, and, and he's looking at me and he goes, um, uh, he goes, I, I want you to get the red out of your hair and I want you to quit wearing the red ties. I think it looks too cartoonish. Okay. Okay. All right, well, then boss says it's fine, no big deal. So the next week you come back black, you know, wearing a black tie, you know, doing, you know, doing what's for black. And I mean, you know, two weeks later it's Detroit, and and uh, I'm wrestling Casey James in the ring, and um, we have the one uh, one miscommunication or whatever that word is, and and I and, and we kind of fumbled on a spot and. And I get to the back, and he's already caught about something, but then he flips his lid saying, I'm trying to be the undertaker. And that, I'm, uh, how dare I? And, you, you know, cussing me out and going crazy, and you should go, go to, uh, take her right now, and you tell him you're sorry. 
and I've been talking to Taker for for months and weeks on end. I mean, I mean, you know, uh, Taker's a good friend of mine in this business, and and and, and it's been a mentor, you know, to me since I kind of started back as Kevin Thorne, and and even further than that in the Mordecai days because he was the one that wanted to work me because he liked the promos and he liked the stuff that I was doing doing and the stuff I pitched and you know it, it was it was like okay I'll go tell him but he was right on board with this the whole time because I mean what we were being told is that's what they wanted to do mm-hmm. so you know it's kind of like who the hell got it in his head that I you know I was trying to be a knockoff because I that, that was you know kind of kind of be it but it wasn't it and, but all of a sudden that was you know the next week was uh you know getting a call from johnny Vince wants you to cut your hair and you need to you know get wrestling gear oh man that's what the outfit came from the new outfit yeah and i was like oh okay um great but okay so what's the what's the story gonna be or nothing and you know they said oh we we're gonna come up with something that was like you know you walk out there and all of a sudden it's oh he's more aggressive now and yada yada and it was it was, I mean it was it was so stale and it was like it, from from like that day on it was like my soul had been ripped from me because it it was it, there was no point to it I mean yeah. we were I was coming off of some some hell of some matches with Stevie Richards that was only supposed to be like a two week deal but since we went out there and just beat the crap out of each other you know they loved it so they kept doing another one and another one and another one and then going into the the four-way dances with me, Stevie, and Elijah, and, you know, everything else. And, I mean, I was starting to get ahead of steam, and all of a sudden it was just like, um, now you're just going to be generic guy. And and the audience wasn't digging generic guy. They they were, they were liked that vampire thing. They liked the way I was displaying it. And, and you know, to this day, everybody, you know, any appearance I do, anything, is like, oh, man, we really miss you. We We'd love to have you back. You know, there's petitions, there's all kind of stuff, but it's like uh, they don't get it, so it's not used. I don't, I don't know how you not get it, but hey, whatever. That's crazy. Well, on top of it too, I mean, being on ECW, one of the things, I mean, being the, the third show, so often, unless you're in the main event of that that third show. Ben sometimes doesn't even pay attention to what's going on, and then he finds out. I mean, I always remember the story about Stevie Richards was playing the Sunday Night Heat general manager gimmick for like three or four months before. Someone in the office finally watched Sunday Night Heat and realized he was doing it and got mad about it. So sometimes it was it was almost like you would be doing things and Vince wouldn't even be aware of it. Yep, yep. There's a lot of that going on sometimes. I mean, you know, but there there comes a, it comes a game where it's, there's just so much going on at once that yeah, you know, it's, it's hard for one man to keep up even though he wants to. Yeah. Well, how did you feel being, being in ECW? Because I, I think in the last few years, it was one of the most hyped events that WWE had was this big rebirth of ECW, which I think in the end ended up being you know, somewhat successful. But, I mean, especially at first, it must have been a tough position for you to be in because there were obviously a lot of high expectations from a lot of fans. And, and here you guys were as kind of the new ECW guys. How did you feel uh, for that first show? Um, nah, I liked it. I mean, you know, it was different. I mean, you know, the the... The diehard ECW fans kind of crapped all over it at the beginning, but, you know, I think towards the end, you know, especially when we, we got it going with the new breed versus the originals and stuff like that, I think we, we really, you know, proved that, you know, we were there to, to hang into, you know, I mean, that, that we were, that we were worth, you know, watching and we were worth, you know, the respect of the fans and stuff like that. I mean, you know, that, um, the kind of, I guess the ender, the the night, the two nights after WrestleMania, that the hardcore matchup in in um, uh, Fort Wayne. I mean, I mean, I got all kind of response after that. You know, oh man, we really hated you guys at the beginning, but wow, that was, you know. So I mean, I think at the end we got a, got the respect from them, but and then all of a sudden we were disbanded. You know, I was like, okay, this, you know, you're you're going to be in a uh, a regular guy that. Well, never mind. You know, we'll, just, <laughs> we'll see. You know, you're gone. Uh, Elijah, you know. I mean, uh, Elijah really come to his own in TNA. I mean, you know, because they, they, they let him kind of do what he could do, you know. Monty, you know, Monty Brown, Marcus Cavan was going to be, you know, something to stand out. And, you know, I mean, Stryker was a hell of a talker. Stryker should have been a manager all along with, you know, 
and what, what he did with Big Daddy V and everything else was phenomenal. Um, you know, the worst part about ECW was the fact that we were just like the bastard child. I mean, you know, when they put out the house shows and, you know, did everything with us, it was just like, I mean, there was like a $500 advertising budget for us. I mean, you know, it was, it was like you'd show up and, you know, there'd be a thousand or so fans, but it was just like, they just never really put anything into it. So it's kind of like you, you, we were kind of, you know, we were backed by WWE, but we were, you know, still fighting for our lives kind of thing, you know, like, like the old days. I mean, you know, and, and, and it was, um, you know, it, it was it definitely fun. I mean, you know, because, I mean, you know, uh, Dreamer's, Dreamer's always been a good friend of mine, and, you know, RVD and Sabu and, you know, those guys are, you know, they were the, the icons of kind of the, the rebel days to me. And, I mean, you know, it, it was it was definitely fun, you know. Uh, we had a great crew, and, I mean, you know, if they would have put more into it and they would have, you know, not been scared of us, um, I think the sky would have been the limit for that show. I mean, I mean, I definitely do. I think you guys had, I mean, just great chemistry. I mean, you think back to the guys from them, uh, from from the beginning of that, the ECW show, it was you, it was Mike Knox, it was CM Punk, Kelly Kelly, all kind of debuting, and there's almost an irony to the fact that that ECW is now over, and, and you guys are kind of like the new ECW originals, when I think a lot of people think of, uh, uh, you know, the second coming of that, that uh, yeah. brand. Yeah, which is crazy. I mean, you know, you think about the talent that, you know, came in during that time. I mean, you know, Punk, I mean, speaks for himself. But, I mean, you know, Mike Knox, I mean, phenomenal. Probably one of the, one of the better big men in this today. I mean, as far as he can move, he can he can anything that anybody else can do. You know, it's got that, that Bruiser Brody look to him. I mean, just it just looks like a force. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I, I mean, myself, uh, Aja, I mean, you know, uh, Mike Brown or Marcus Cavalli, I mean, you know, he was he was starting to come into his own. I mean, yeah, it, it was just, there were a lot of, you know, a, a lot of good talent that, that could have, you know, definitely even moved up even further. And, you know, they just kind of, you know, they, they found their one chosen one, which was CM Punk, and that's kind of, everybody else kind of, you know, fell by the wayside a little bit. And, I mean, again, it's just, it's, just wasted talent, you know. Well, you know, it really was too. I think that with you guys, that was that was tough. Was that they started this third brand almost from scratch with brand new names and, and brand new guys. They didn't get a lot of advertising, like you said. But especially early on, I mean, you had your own, not only your own house shows, but you had your own pay per views when you guys did the December to December. It was it was almost kind of seemed like they were trying. They were expecting you guys to do the same kind of business they were doing with Raw and SmackDown, while getting you know one eighth of the attention from the uh, from the office. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, I mean, the, the key is, though, is, you know, we would be the equivalent of the next guys now, and we're, you know, we're all better wrestlers. We're, not to knock these guys, but they're, I mean, they're still young. I mean, uh, with the, with the exception of, um, you know, a Caval, you know, a Caval low key, you know, Brian Danielson, um, you know, they, yeah, they, they throw them in there, but I mean, for the most part, they're all kind of the, the developmental guys. Yeah for, the, yeah, for the most part, they're they're it's developmental on tour, and uh, I mean, you know, these guys have, you know, um, nobody, nobody. I hate to, I hate to say pay dues. I really do because I don't. I mean, anymore, I don't think anybody does it. I don't even know if I did it to the to the standard of maybe some other guys did it, but I, nobody is anymore drives up and down the road and does this for for the love of the business. They you know, they got paid because they're an NFL guy or they got paid because their 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 daddy was somebody. You know, they got paid because, you know, of something. And they get put down in, you know, Tampa, Florida, you know, beach, sun, sand, women, um, you know uh, and get this life and then the next step is, you know, they, they train in a, a ring in a warehouse and then they're brought to TV where uh, it just, to me, it's just, it's, it's a disconnect sometimes because I don't think they know how to, to use the crowd to their advantage. They don't know how to market themselves because they never have to learn because they've been handed it the whole time. You know, um, they don't know what it means to to um, go out and travel up and down the road, you know, and, and you know, God forbid I owe 
Exxon and some BP, some money out there. Uh, I didn't steal it. I just borrowed it. I'll pay it back eventually at some point. But, uh, I mean, you know, to, to, to show up to a, a place and get a $40 payoff or get nothing and be told, um, man, we've got some extra uh, disgusting hot dogs and some some Diet K's, you know, because it, it, we're too cheap to even get Diet Coke. I mean, you know, and I mean, I, I think that's the thing that uh, – that misses out there is nobody has loved to, nobody has learned to do this for the absolute love and the guys that do it for the absolute love are the guys that are shit on the nuance in this business today mm -hmm. I agree with you absolutely I mean, it's, just, it's just changed so much that a lot of times you know these guys show up and, and they walk into developmental and it's like day one you kind of get that impression that you're a superstar back then it was you know by the time you were finally signed to WWE you kind of figured out what you were doing with yourself and you know, this is going to be your career. And some of these guys, they haven't even figured out if this is what they want to do forever by the time they're they're on television. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, which, which you run into, you know, the Brock Lesnar's or the Bobby Lashley's or the, you know, the what, you know, you know, some of those guys that were, that were hired, you know, paid huge amounts of money out of, out of college wrestling and then, you know, brought in and, 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 and made to be wrestlers. Now, granted, I mean, those guys are, phenomenal athletes and that's why they did so much and I mean you know Brock was ahead of his game so was I mean you know so was so was Lashley in a, in, a, in a standpoint but the reason why they didn't stick around and, and, and do what was best for business by you know getting over and then passing the torch instead of just leaving on top is they you know they never had the love I mean they, they, they you know the love was for the money which you know what I mean sometimes Maybe that's best. I mean, because it is. It's like a bad wife sometimes, you know, or, or a bad girlfriend. It, you, for some reason, as much as it kicks your, you know, beats you up or whatever, you, you only want more. You know, you can't never. You, you, for some reason, those lights are, are the worst drug out there. It's you know, it's not the pills. It's not the steroids. It's not this. It's 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 the you know, it's the lights. Yeah. I mean, it's the lights and being in front of the crowd. You know. Even when you're done, you're still still jonesing for you. Like, oh well, you know, maybe if I got in shape, or maybe if I did this, or I cut my hair, I dyed my hair, I got new tights, or you know, when when you first you know leave or whatever, the whole time you're wrecking your brain for months on end is how, how can I get back? And, you know, as much as you've been shit on, you still want to go back. <laughs> it's amazing, you know. You know, what, what can I make it make it do different? <laughs> well, maybe it changes. I mean, it's just it's crazy, you know. So it's, it's um, uh, you know, it's definitely, definitely an experience, you know. Um, uh, always, uh, there's a bunch of kids in England and some other kids recently, they, they came and they asked me, they're like, oh, you know, uh, what do we got to do to be wrestlers? I go, well, have you gone to college yet? Have you done this? Well, no. I said, do that. Then start to become a wrestler because it, as long as you have something to fall fall back on, it's so much better. Cause, you know, like I've been in this almost 30, almost going on 14 years now, and and I, I bypassed college and I bypassed some things to get into this, and now I look back going, damn it! I just wish I would have gone to school. Because I mean, granted, I'm still making money or whatever now, and I'm, you know, I got some got some things you know that that are looking good from the future. But it would be nice to have that security sometimes that you know I, I could actually you know, fill out a job application and not be laughed at by because I got uh, OVW as my college reference. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. I know what are you talking about? It's, it's like you, 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 you do this sometimes and it's like, yeah, I don't even know if they'd even consider me because, you know, yes, I have the, the ability to, to, you know, go all over the world and, 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 and market myself and, you know, and, and be a recognizable figure, but for some reason in corporate America, they they have no clue what that means. So, you know, it's a crazy world out there. No, I, it's funny, too, because I've dealt with that even uh, just having, you know, written the books or whatever, doing things involved with wrestling. When people see that outside of wrestling, when they hear about it, Immediately, there's just like a million questions, whether or not it's appropriate at the time. You know, when you're talking to somebody, they just have, you know, uh, oh, I watched it when I was a kid, and what happened to Jimmy Snuka, and you kind of have to feel all that kind of nonsense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely, definitely uh, not, uh, 
a, a love kind of thing that, you know, you, you either love it or hate, you hate it. I mean, you know, you, you get in it for for some sort of reason, you know. Um, I got into it because, I, I, you know, I, it was more or less to hang out with a buddy of mine who was a workout partner. You know, I'd always watch it on USWA, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a lifelong goal of mine. But, you know, as I got into it, you know, I just, I fe- you know, I fell in love with that rush of, you know, entertaining somebody and, you know, either making them hate you you know, wholeheartedly to the point where they want to go stab your tires or, or love you to the point where if someone did stab your tires, they'd go buy you four, four sets of new ones. <laughs> and, you know, so it's, it, 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 it definitely, you know, it's, it's something that you, it, it just, it's, it's definitely a love thing, you know? Yeah, for sure. Totally. Well, let me ask you real quick about, um, Shelly Martinez, because I think a lot of people probably ask you about working with her, because you guys were, Especially early on in ECW, one of the most memorable things about that that whole uh, you know start of that whole company, uh, where you and Shelly working together as Ariel, uh, it was like working with her. And uh, I think a lot of people probably ask any chance of you guys reuniting, maybe on the independents, because I mean there's just a hell of a lot of chemistry. Yeah, no, um, uh, working with her was, I mean, it was it was great. I mean, um, you know, we kind of had like a sister brother thing for a while. It was kind of like you know we we got along, but we didn't because. Um, I think uh, the problem is with a with a with a girl coming in, you know, especially an attractive girl or whatever, is all the boys are trying to bang her. Mm-hmm. You know? So they're getting in her head and telling her, Oh, he's not looking out for you, he's not doing this and he's not doing this and the whole time I'm trying to tell her, Look, I'm telling you if you just listen to me, you know, I'm trying to protect you here. If you if you take a bump every match it means nothing when you you know you finally got to take one on a pay per view, or if you do that, you, you know there's there's methods to the madness, and you, you can't you know it can't always be about you because when the light finally does get to shine on you, then it you know then it really shines on you, and it was you know kind of a uh, uh, a banging my head against the wall there for a while, but you know towards towards the end it was we got on the same page, and I mean then it really got going, and then. And all of a sudden, they fired her. I was like, oh, you know, I was like, damn it. You know, it was just, it was crazy. But um, as far as working together again, man, I, you know, I'd love to. I mean, I just think it's, you know, it comes down to if a promoter is going to spend the money on, you know, uh, you know, having two people come in, you know, uh, a, a, you know, a valet and a, mm-hmm. and a and a wrestler. You know, I mean, I think that's the biggest key. We did we did two or three things out in Germany and. I mean, the guy bankrolled because of us. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of people. We did some autograph signings uh, last year around this time, and I mean, the people that brought us in bankrolled because of us. I mean, I mean, we definitely um, we had that you know that that following out there that's you know always always good, and you know we kind of became the, the pop icons, I guess, of, of of our time period. So I mean, you know. People really, you know, you know, dug the entrance and they, you know, dug everything about it. And, you know, and there comes to the marketing again. It's, it's like we don't want to go out there and be generic. You know, what can we do to, to, you know, make ourselves stand out? And, you know, at the end of the night, if they're going to remember something about the, you know, the whole event, I want them to remember, you know, the entrance and, you know, the, the lights and the, you know, they're going to see a thousand and one body slams. They're going to see a thousand and one this, but what are, what are they going to remember? You know, they're yeah. going to remember the entrance. You know, people leave. You know, WWE. You know, most uh, SmackDown events or whatever that the Undertaker's on, and that's all they talk about is, you know, how they got goosebumps when the lights went out and the gong, you know the gongs belled. So I mean, you know, what can we do to get that too? You know. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, in your entrance, when you talk about the whole entrance that you and Shelly had and the whole, the whole gimmick, the whole thing behind it, uh, was one of the stuff about you guys coming out that made a lot of people kind of take notice. My, my question for you, we ask a lot of our guests kind of this whenever we have them on. Before you came in, as, as uh, Kevin Thorne, when they brought you back the second time, was there another name? Were there any other names pitched to you, or was that uh, one of the first ones that they gave out? No, actually, um, Paul um, called me and was like, um, they need a name for you. Because to be honest, man, I don't. At the, at the very beginning of this, I'm. I don't know if they really thought that I was going to be around. <laughs> I, I, I think it was kind of a, um, a, a 
thing to suffice Spike or, or um, Sci-Fi actually yeah. at the time. You know, I think it was uh, you know we're gonna give him an alien, we're gonna give him a werewolf, we're gonna give him this, you know, week week in and week out, you know, kind of thing to get him off our backs because originally, you know, ECW was supposed to be an all gimmick um, show. Uh-huh. I mean, it was it, you know it was supposed to be on Sci-Fi Channel, it was supposed to have aliens and werewolves, and it was you know it's supposed to be a sci- you know wrestling with science fiction. I mean. I remember Dreamer calling me saying, hey, you know, they're going to hire you back. Uh, they think, you know, there's a couple of things that they think that they can do with you. You know, which one do you prefer? And I said, vampire. I was like, dude, vampire, vampire, vampire. I said, bring me and Gangrel in and, you know, let us kind of reinvent the brood and, you know, pick the vampire thing. And uh, I started watching what was going on. And I was like, oh, crap. Uh, this is going to be kind of a a quick little deal. I said, you know. And uh, uh, so I started dressing it up more and tried to put as much as I could into it, and it seemed like it started catching on. And then, you know, uh, Heyman had called me and was like, uh, I need names, and I need them now. Uh, they want a name for you, like, yesterday. And I was like, oh, crap. So, you know, I went to work, and I wrote down as many names as I possibly could. And uh, I, was all, I was watching a lot of Lost Boys, because I always thought Lost Boys kind of, you know, was, was one of the coolest vampire flicks that kind of, you know, was a vampire the now, you know, kind of thing. And the dog and vampire, uh, Thorn, I just, uh, for some reason, I just really liked that. And I was like, I don't want to be Thorn. And next thing I know, I was Kevin Thorn because you can't ever get exactly what you want, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I was Kevin Thorn, which to me was kind of funny because, um, you know, uh, my real name's Kevin, and, um, you know, my parents named it because, or, you know, picked the name Kevin because it was, you know, uh, it was, if you look in the name books, uh, it's like um, kind, humble, and patient or something. It's totally not me at all. They really named me wrong. <laughs> but uh, but it, it, it was kind of funny. Here, here it is. I'm, uh, you know, my first name means kind, and then Thorn, you know, means, you know, whatever. It's kind of like, all right, yin and yang here, but, hey, it works. I'm on TV. I'm definitely not going to fight it. So, you know, that's, that's one of the main reasons I've kind of, you know, in WFX, I'm, you know, I'm calling – Calling myself Thorn now because, I mean, it, 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 uh, what I really uh, originally wanted to be anyway, you know, because I, I think it's it's kind of cool and, um, you know, Drake or Draco or any of that any of that stuff kind of just it's just so overdone. You, yeah, overdone that it, it just you know, I mean, granted I should have used Edward or you know something like that, but hey, you know, what are you going to? No, I mean, you're probably giving your problems later on, though, once everything started uh, blowing up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. You're definitely kidding. I just, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, to me, I, I mean, I like the, I, you know, the Twilight thing is kind of cool and all that, and this new one actually looks like it's going to start to be a little bit, you know, more badass, but the first two, man, were such a, like, a, a letdown. It was just such a, such a chick flick. Yeah, I'll go. Like, you're killing me with this, you know. One one fight scene in the whole movie. I mean, you know, it's like, guys. Right, but well, I mean, while American Idol's losing Simon Cowell, we have to give the uh, the 15 year old girl something to to <laughs> match yeah, yeah. so I guess. Exactly, exactly. Kev, last question I want to ask you. We ask all of our guests the same question. Uh, if you could choose someone, maybe someone that was in the business before you got into it, maybe somebody who's just been in a different company than you've been in, that you say, you know what, I, I wish I could work with this person. Who would you pick? Any time period. Uh, Dusty Rose. Okay. I, I, I really, I really, I really think uh, uh, Dusty um, was such a genius, and and you know the stuff that he did with Calvin Sullivan, and you know that kind of stuff. That I, I, I think I, I really could have, you know, been put on the map, huge, you know, uh, forever with 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 working him. There's something about it. You know, um, I've always wanted to work Taker, and it seems like every time I get to work Taker, uh, it's like my my jinx. As soon as I'm told I'm working Taker, I get fired or released or, <laughs> or whatever. So I, I've quit saying Taker because, it, you know, the, I don't work for a major company right now, so if I say I want to work Taker, I'm probably just going to die. So <laughs> let's not do that one. Um, but, yeah, no, man, Dusty's, Dusty's always – you know, just something about him, you know, and the way I, you know, when I was down in, down at FCW and, you know, um, and stuff, 
just something about him, you know. I always learned so much from him. And he's actually the one that got me my job back, to be honest. Um, uh, they called me up, and Dusty was in town, and I was living in Louisville at the time. And Dusty, or, uh, uh, Lauren Ives had called me up and basically said, Hey, uh, Dusty's in town. We'd like you to come down and work a match. Um, they're kind of evaluating talent, and we want you to do a, a promo. Well, um, I was like, Okay, and uh, Dreamer had called me and already told me that they're really thinking about me doing this vampire thing. So uh, you know, I went like went out and did like the typical uh, uh, mark for the business would do. I went and dyed my hair jet black and painted my thing. You know, did everything possible to to, to look the part and look the character. And went in there and you know um, did this promo in front of Dusty and you know. And Dusty, you know, was staring at the paper the entire time with everybody. Never really looked up. And, you know, next thing I know, he's looking up at me with his glasses on, and he looks back down, and he's like, do it again. I did it again. And he, do it again, and do it again, and do it again. And he just, every time I got done with it, he said, do it again. And by, by the time the whole room was quiet, and everybody, you know, was up on the guardrails and, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. And he goes, you see what you just did, kid? And I was like, um, yeah, I, I think I do. I mean, in my back of my head, I was thinking, yeah, I had to fucking do my promo a thousand times. Thanks, asshole. I was an idiot. But uh, we, we got, you know, all the people in the room to completely stop what they were doing, stand on the guardrail, and just be mesmerized. You know, not by my actions or whatever, but the inflection of my voice and the way I was, you know, you know, carrying it out and whatever. And he goes, "That's how you draw money." And I was like, "Oh, all right." You know, and I kind of walked and started putting my, you know, sitting there and you know, I thanked him and everything else. And about you know, 45 minutes later, it was John calling me, "Hey, we're going to be doing this and this and this. Uh, your contract to be in the mail. This is what we want to pay you." You know, and it was like. All right, you know, so, I mean, definitely owe Dusty a, a, a great bit of um, gratitude and respect, but, I mean, he was he was always the one, even in ECW, you know, always, I mean, he, he finally got to a point where he told me, I'm, i i got to quit going to bat for you with Vince, because I'm giving him all these great ideas, and, and I think Vince hates me, so it's hurting you. <laughs> so he's like, He's like, yeah, I think Vince knows that I have good ideas and he doesn't want to say I say I do, so he's never he's not gonna use you. So he goes, What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just stop even announcing you and it was funny, when he stopped using my name is when they started using me. <laughs> like, you know, it's like it was crazy, you know, he goes, I'm gonna act like I don't know what I'm gonna do with you and then somehow write you in the write you in the deal, you know, it's just <laughs> just uh, it, it, it's crazy, but I think um yeah. Me and Dusty, you know, Dusty and I, uh, we could have really made some money, man. He, he, you know, just something about it. He just, you know, he would have brought the the best part about me out, and you know, and and and, and you know, we we could have really had some fun for sure. It's awesome. Well, I'll tell you this: anybody out there who wants to know more about about your career, or even independent uh, promoters out there who are looking to book you, you guys can go to seven dash thorn dot com. That's uh, Kevin's official website. It has all the information. You can buy T-shirts. You can buy the whole nine yards. Uh, Kevin and I have actually lost each other twice during this phone call, but because of my audio editing skills, you didn't know about it until now. Uh, so, Kevin, thank you for being patient. And before I let you go, I give all of our guests a chance to talk directly to their fans. So, what do you have to say to all the little? Uh, Thorny, uh, thorny maniacs out there who have been following you for uh, for a while now. Th- thorny maniacs? Oh, uh, you know, uh, no thorny maniacs. The, the, the brotherhood is uh, what I'd like to refer them to them as because, if, you know, they remember the days of the WWE universe and stuff like that. You know, I started the, the, the brotherhood thing on there, and, uh, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of great fans out there, you know, hopefully still remember that and stuff. Um, if you've got Facebook, find me. Um, it, I'm on on there. It's uh, Seven Thorn S E V E N T H O R N, and uh, you can always go to my uh, website Seven Thorn dot com. And uh, here before long, I guess I'm going to break down and do the, jump on the Twitter bandwagon. So uh, I'll let you guys know about that too. So um, you know, um, uh, if you're a fan, uh, tell you the best thing I can do 
to get me out to where you're at. Us. Tell your local promoter, hey, you know, we want to see him and, you know, get him booked and stuff. And uh, I, you know, definitely love coming anywhere. I have a great time wherever I go. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love getting out there and actually getting to meet people face to face who are, you know, dropping me lines and, and uh, um, sending me messages and, and, and whatever. So, um, you yeah, know, I definitely look forward to it. Um, not going anywhere too soon, I don't think, uh, you know, unless a plane decides to drop on my head right now. But, other, other, you know, other than that, um, you know, I'm going to be around for a while, and, you know, this is uh, something I enjoy doing. And, um, you know, as, as long as the, the fans are appreciating it and, and enjoying what I do, I, uh, I definitely enjoy getting to let them see what they enjoy watching. So, uh, it's, uh, it's a big thing, man. So, um, I definitely, big thanks, thanks to you, James, uh, you know, and, and, and thanks for allowing me to come on here and, and talk and, and, um, you know, definitely look forward to, for things to come for sure. My pleasure, Kevin. Thank you so much, man, for taking the time today. Yeah, man. Thank you.